a lot of the hopes around decentralised, quite egalitarian, democratic kind of communities come straightforwardly from the 60s and they've been sort of transposed with technology into these new forms. But if you go back even before that, then I think that part of it is people yearning for a sort of anti-industrial or pre-industrial, pre-modern kind of form of organisation, which is much more commons-based, very old idea, the commons as common land or forest. Um, it's much more folkish. Folk creativity is really ancient. It's about people sharing ideas and developing them. Um, and so if you get those ideas, then you get this really potent mix, which is that it's both post-industrial, sort of anti-industrial, if you like, the 60s, and pre-industrial, which is these much older ideas. And that makes it all much more powerful, it seems to me, than simply it being about the application of new technology. Be very aware that the history of sort of common and collaborative endeavours, of sort of community-based endeavours, is invariably that they flower for a period, they're full of possibility, and then they collapse. And they usually collapse because they don't really work, or people fall out, or they run into the sand, or there's some restoration of power by corporations or the state. They come in and they reassert the traditional order of private property or government control. Um, and that goes right the way back, for me, to sort of the English Revolution, the, the levellers and the diggers, who posed in sort of 1649, this huge challenge to established order, and they flowered for a while, these communities, people working together, and then they were closed down, in effect. Well, the web could be a bigger version of that story. And so it's very, very important that we use this collaborative space in a very strong and creative way to create things that are sustainable, they work, they gain momentum and they're not seen as kind of just interesting experiments. Because if we, if we don't take it, then this opportunity, then it, it could all too easily get closed down. One of the big questions about the web is whether this is just a moment in its development when all this collaboration is possible, uh, which might be extinguished because governments might come back to control it or corporations might eventually control it again or whether it, that, this is some permanent change and permanent possibility. So that collaborative ethos that came out of a mixture of sort of academics, their peer-to-peer -peer kind of very flat kind of way of working, and geeks sharing code, and hippies who had the values of community and all the rest of it, that was written into a lot of what went on in the 60s that created the preconditions for the web. And that still lives somehow in the culture and that's why governments and corporations find it so uncomfortable, because the sort of tools and technology of modern capitalism and modern society are now founded on something that came from academics, geeks and hippies, not from corporate R&D departments or government policies.